I want to show you something that I'm using a lot in Power BI in my visuals to make them really simple for my end user. And that's a heat map. I create heat maps just with the basic visuals that we have. So you don't need to download anything. You can create a heat map using a matrix visual. So you could transform a matrix like this to actually a heat map and a clustered bar chart like this this. Do I say that you always have to do this? No, of course not. There are really good reasons why people like their matrix or table visuals, but sometimes visualizing it and making it easy to see what the end user is looking for is actually what they are looking for. So I'm going to show you how you can create this heat map. Let's go into Power BI. So we see we have our matrix visual here and we have our heat map and bar chart. Here. If you look at our matrix visual, you see the month sales, sales last year and sales difference. And if I click on a month, I get some cities there. So now, of course, we have to know what our end user is looking for. If they are, for example, looking for which month the sales from this year were higher than last year, because that would be positive. We don't need to actually show them every month all the numbers for sales, sales last year and sales difference. We could visualize it in a heat map. And then if they want to dig through and want to see like which city had the best sales or not that good sales, we could show that in a visual. So how do we do that? First, I will show you step by step. I just create a copy of my matrix visual here. And the only thing that's important to us here is the sales difference. I will put this here on top for now, because that's what we want to create in the heat map. It was the sales difference positive or negative. So I'm going to remove the sales and the sales last year. And I'm for now also going to remove the city here. And now to create this heat map, I actually want to switch the month from the rows to the columns. But now you see something that's a really, really long heat map there. So first thing I want to do, I remove the totals and then I also go to my date table and use the month name short, makes it already a little better. Also something we can do because this is going to be a heat map. I go to my values and I make them really small. And now if we would show this like this, it would look like this. And now I also go to like my specific column here, say it's difference. And I say that I don't want decimals. And now it's even smaller. You see, sometimes we need to do some little tricks there to get this value smaller. A workaround for this could be that you create a new measure where you say uh, the sales difference was positive one or negative zero. And then you would just have these one and zeros. But I want these actual values in there. So if someone after I publish this to the online environment hovers over it, sees the actual value if they would want to see it. So now we have these values. How do we get this? to this. We go to our values and we go to conditional formatting. And first I say background color. And now I add a rule. If the sales difference is bigger than zero and smaller than max, if you just remove what they put in there, it will automatically be max and lower than zero. I want it to be red like this. And I click OK. And now you already see this looks kind of like our heat map. I, now we do the same for the font color. There we go. So this already looks heat map ish. Something that we still need is a little space here in between. So how are we going to do that? I go to grid and then I say vertical grid lines on and I make them white and I make them a little wider here. So this works quite well and it gives you exactly the same distance between your values in there. I don't like this blue border here. So I also go to grid border and then I think it's here column header. So I remove that one. And just like that, you create your own heat map. 